Let's begin 168 in your hymnals, 168, Mansion Over the Hilltop. Let's all stand, shall we? I get up here. How many of you were singing? How many of you meant it? Oh, you I wasn't mean, singing. Oh. I wasn't singing. I was busy. I was counseling. How many of you, you know you're going to heaven? 
We need to act like it. It's the best thing that will ever happen to us. It will take us eternity to comprehend. People should see it. People should see it, right? We should sing it. The neighbors should go, what in the world is their problem? Right? They should call the fuzz on us. Remember what the fuzz is? They should call the fuzz on us because we're too loud. Right? And then the fuzz says, what are you doing? We say, well, we're just excited we're going to heaven. And we're singing. They can make their noise, right? Why can't we make ours? Let, let's be excited about it. Glad you're here. Let, let's pray, can we? Heavenly Father, we give you this day. We're asking you, Lord, to speak to us, work in us. And you can use us, and you don't have to use us, but, Lord, we know that you're the one that gives us eternal life, and we're glad that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay for our sins, and then you rose him up after three days from the dead to show that it worked. And you said if we trust that, if we believe that, if we come to you and say, I believe Jesus died for me, I believe Jesus paid for my sins, I want you to be my Savior. You said you'd do it. And there's a whole bunch of people in here who have done that and know that's true. So we thank you. And may, may our expression today of the love that we have for you, may it be seen as we sing and give and listen and respond to your word. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Page 149 in your hymnals, Shelter in the Arms of God, 149. you know that that's what it's about this world is not my home I'm just a passing through if you I want to read this letter again many of you know Gary Gilmore this is an update as of yesterday on where he's at physically it says as many of you know I have struggled with various health issues since 2019. First, prostate cancer and most recently colon cancer. The prostate cancer has metastasized into bone cancer, and now the colon cancer has reappeared and is at stage four. 
I've decided to end all treatments and just depend on the Lord's will to be done and the prayers of God's people. I have been told that I may have weeks or months by the doctors, but they are not in control. God is. I am canceling all of my meetings for the rest of the year and moving up to Wisconsin to my daughter and son-in-law's place so I can be around family. I have been blessed with a wonderful family who are doing everything they can to be of help. God has given me a rich and wonderful life of serving the Lord for 56 years. As William Borden said when dying, I have no regrets. That's the way I feel. God can still keep me alive if it is his will. But if not, I say with Paul, I have a desire to depart. I'll see my Savior and my wife and many others. I'm so glad I can say it is well with my soul. God bless you all. Stay in the fight. And as my wife used to say, it will be worth it all. So you be praying for him. And we've got an address if you'd like to send a note to him and encourage him. But you pray. You pray. You pray. If you have a bulletin, we remind you, choir is tonight at 5, evening service at 6, afterglow for the teens following the service tonight. And then this week, the last the last meeting of Awana. So it's Awana in the fun fair. And there's a note there. The time, ages, or four years old through sixth grade. We are here in the auditorium. The teens are in the youth center on Wednesday. They're there at 7. We're here at 7. And we need cookies for the fun fair. My wife is busy downstairs. So if you can get word to maybe Lynn or someone that you are bringing cookies that you can bring. We don't care if they're bought. We Remember those cookies that were like paper thin? And they had some black marks on them, and they called them chocolate chips. We called them chocolate smear cookies. They didn't put a whole chip in there. They would just smear. I, I, I don't know if you know kids, but they'll eat those. So whatever you bring. So don't spend all your effort. If you're going to make real good cookies and spend all that money, leave them at my office door. <laughs> Give them kids the chocolate smear cookies. There will be a Bible school meeting the 31st. We're going to have Vacation Bible School. May 31st, that's a Wednesday night following the evening service. And then in two weeks, the Fairhaven Baptist College Ensemble will be with us, a group of students who are traveling for the summer. And uh, I'm excited. Eli Schrock, who we support to Cambodia, his brother, Yura, and I don't know if you've ever met him, but he has a brother that teaches there. Yura Shrock, all saved out of the Amish faith. Their dad got saved. The van driver was driving their dad around and witnessed to him, and the dad got saved, and all the kids got saved. All the kids are serving the Lord. Eli's in Cambodia. A couple of the boys are at Fairhaven. Yura will be with the group, so I'm excited for you to meet him. Wonderful man and great testimony. So glad you're here. Bob Fights is visiting with us. So happy to have Bob with us. If you're visiting Samuel. Usher. Usher, is this, is this a guest of yours? No? Yeah. Abigail, no? Come, oh, I'm sorry. Comes on the bus. Anybody else come on the bus? Pray for Miss Linda. Miss Linda's just going through the ringer. She broke her foot. Now she's sick. That's what Ron said. But that, how many of you trust Ron? I wouldn't raise my hand either. Yeah, <laughs> ushers, you come. <laughs> give if you can. God can meet your needs. He doesn't need us. But we give to just show that we love Him. Becky Bodie's birthday is today. She's seventy-seven. <laughs> Might as well be. She's way older than I am, way, several months older than I am. Hey, when you hit 30, you're old. The slide, you're on the slide. It's over. How's your trip? Would you do it again? If you could, if Carol and Samuel wouldn't go, you'd probably go. <laughs> Samuel graduated. I know it's a left hand. Officially went down to Pensacola. 
That's because nobody thought you were going to make it. That... Right, Carol? She won't, she won't agree to that. Pray with me. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking care of our biggest problem. Thank you that we could come and worship you. And Lord, we're laughing because, as you said, it, we're rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And we can't help but just giggle and chuckle and, and we're ecstatic that you love us and you want us in heaven with you. You said that where I am, there ye may be also. You have a desire for us to be with you. Thank you, God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Please take your hymnals once again and turn to 180, page 180. When the roll is called up yonder, let's all stand, shall we? On the first verse, Junior Church, you may be dismissed. are going to come play a special. Like a machine. You see those bows, Cherie and Sarah, right at the same, like a machine. Maybe they are. Maybe they're robots. Romans chapter 6, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And Abby was there too. And poor Milo. I'm going to call him PM. Poor Milo. Just sits there. Nobody recognizes him. Nobody cares about him. Romans chapter 6, see, look at poor Milo, poor Milo, Romans chapter 6, not poor Abby, poor Milo. Romans chapter 6, there's a unique phrase 
in this chapter caught my attention. I've been reading it a while, wanted to share it with you and talk about it. Romans chapter, if you can look on, I know that you can hear it, and I know, you may not know, but I know I'm going to read it, so I know you're going to hear it, but I know that it would be better if you saw it and heard it. So if there's a way to look on, please do that. We do not have, maybe when we get the pews and we have room, maybe we can squeeze some Bibles in there because it'll have the big, has the big racks with cup holders and little ice boxes and um, USB ports and what else do we need? Oh, a call button that if you need help, you push a button and we'll have a attendant come to you and you can order stuff from Leo's. and <laughs> Romans chapter 6. Those pews will never come. I gave up on them. Forget it. They're not coming. We're going to sit on the floor. We're going to get rid of the chairs. Sit Indian style. Romans chapter 6, if, if you can, I want you to watch, listen, observe closely what we're about to read because it's something you've heard, you've read. If you've been a Christian a while, you've been around these verses. We want to capture the meaning. We want to leave here knowing what it says, why it says that. Who's it saying it to? Notice verse 1, Romans 6. He writes, what shall we say then? Question, what shall we say then? What's he talking about? He's backing up to what he just said in chapter 5. And he's talking about grace. Verse 20, he talks about grace. Verse 21, grace. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, verse 9 says. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So grace means it's all God and not you. Grace means that you need God. God doesn't need you. Grace means that if, if you're in trouble, the only one that can help you with that trouble is God. Grace means that you don't deserve it. But God said, I'm going to be good to you. I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to be the one that helps you. Go to chapter 5, Romans 5, verse 20. It says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. In other words, we're sinners. The law came and said, don't do this, don't do that. If you do this, you're guilty. And none of us keeps the law perfectly. He said, but where sin abounded, no matter how often we sin, it says grace did much more about so there isn't enough sin in the world to swallow or or erase or hide God's grace that God could be good to the worst of sinners the biggest sinner if we took a poll who sinned the most this week I know the winner would probably be a woman I'm just trying to see if you're listening I'm sure it would be one of you. How many of you sinned this week? How many of you sinned a lot? Let's pray. Not really. We're going to pray, but not yet. Verse 21, Romans 5, he writes, That as sin hath reigned unto death. So sin brings death. The, the only prophet of sin is death. You say, that, that's not a very good uh, prophet. No, that's right. He's not saying it, so we go, oh, well, that sounds interesting. No, he's saying, ooh, yuck, that's terrible. It is terrible. Verse 21, that, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace 
reigns through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. How do you get to heaven? By Jesus Christ our Lord. No matter how much you've sinned, if you come to God, God doesn't say, whoa, man, I, I didn't die enough deaths for you. You're a big sinner. Let's say a person lives to be 120 years old. Now, that's probably not impossible, but some of you are so close to 100, I don't want to use that number. Let's say you live to 120, and you sin repeatedly all the way to age 120. According to the Bible, it doesn't matter what you think. According to the Bible, there's enough grace. God is still good, has enough goodness where sin abounded. Grace did much more abound. So if you've been sinning your whole 120 years, God still has enough grace to save you if you call on him at 120 years old. And if you say, boy, God, I've been sinning for 120 years. God says, that's okay. Where sin abounded, grace did much more. Doesn't just say it abounded. Did much more about it. So he gets to chapter 6. He says, what, what shall we say then? Don't look at me. I mean, you can look at me, but don't wait. I'm, I'm stalling on purpose. I, I want you to think about what's happening here. In other words, there's nothing you can say. He goes on and says, shall we? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He answers verse 2. He doesn't say no. When you said to your mom, hey, is it okay if I go out? You're 12 years old. Is it okay if I go out all night? I won't be home till tomorrow. Your mom never said, God forbid. Your mom said, no. Or she said, no way. Or as my mom used to say, her two favorite words, absolutely not. No is too easy. She knew I needed more convincing. So when I would say something to her, can I get a motorcycle? I was 12 years old. Mom, I want a motorcycle. Absolutely not. Thank God for my stepdad. My stepdad said, pick one out, I'll pay for it. I didn't like this guy, but now I do. I mean, he barged into my life. Same day my dad walked out. My stepdad moved in. And I didn't like him. And he and I used to physically fight. But when I said I want a motorcycle and my mom said those two cuss words, absolutely not. He said, you pick one out, I'll pay for it. I like him. Say, he was doing that so you'd like him. It worked. I buried him. I did his funeral. He and I talked and became close. Said he got saved when he was in a German prison camp during World War II. He remembered his conversion. He remembered being there in this German prison camp and calling on God to save him. Thank God. Thank God that you can be saved in Germany. Thank God you can be saved in a prison camp. Thank God that even though you, you don't go to church, if you hear that Jesus loves you and died for you, you can be saved. Verse 2 Paul answers himself, God forbid. How shall we? Look at what he says. How shall we? You say, you're reading this awful slow. The message is going to be ten times this long, isn't it? You are very observant. You keep interrupting me, though. Verse 2. Paul answers himself, God forbid. How, how, look at verse 2. How shall we? In other words, can't have it. How should we that are dead to sin? 
live any longer therein. Verse 3, know you not? That so many of us, here comes that phrase. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, here's that phrase, here it is, we're baptized into his death. Weird, that's weird. I've avoided my whole Christian life, 48 years, I've avoided that phrase because it's weird. But it's in the Bible. And Paul writes to the, the church at Rome and he says, don't you know, verse 3, don't, don't you know, how did you not know this? How are you missing this? No, you're not. That so many of us, Paul including himself, as so many as us, we're baptized into Jesus Christ. He's not talking about water baptism. He's not talking about a pool of water. He's not talking about going down into the water and there's no water in there now. He's not talking about the, the picture or the ordinance or the act of baptism. He's not talking about the expression of baptism. He's talking about what Jesus did while she explains it. He says, verse 4, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Well, you say, didn't you just say that the only thing that sin brings is death? Yeah. And Jesus came and beat that, conquered that. See, I'm going to die someday. I may get raptured. But when I die, it'll happen so fast, I won't even know it's death. I'll be translated, I'll be transported to heaven. It'll all happen so quick, I won't go. What happened? And I'll be in heaven. And I won't be majoring, oh man, did you see how I died? Lord, how'd you let that happen? Why could, it, that won't happen. If I get raptured, same way, in, the, in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. As a Christian, God promises me that if he decides to come back in my lifetime, I will be raptioed. I will be caught up, vacuumed. When you vacuum the floor, that stuff doesn't crawl across the carpet. You go on top of it, and when you sweep over it, it sucks up into the cleaner. The rapture is going to be faster than that. The trouble sound, you'll go, what, and boom, it'll be over with. I'm looking forward to that. I have that hope as a Christian. I'm looking forward to that. I'm not looking forward to dying. I'm looking forward to being in heaven. I'm just not looking forward to how I get there. It's like going on a long trip. You know how the trip is? Hey, you take your kids on a trip. You're a mile down the road. Are we there yet? Yeah, almost there. Two days later. Are we there yet? Almost. Now, once you get there, you shouldn't complain about the trip. You should enjoy where you're at. So Paul says there, verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. So in other words, when he died on the cross, he died our death. So we don't have to die death like we deserve. Why? Because of grace. Verse 4, That like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Notice it doesn't say buried. It says planted. Have you seen the crops coming up? Hey, how many of you are ready for sweet corn? Hurry up. I mean, they plowed the field. The buds are starting to come up. They didn't bury seed. They planted seed. 
If you bury something, you don't dig it up. If you plant it, you wait for it to sprout up. Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. You and I, when we die, will be risen from the dead. We won't stay in the ground. Verse 5, for if we have been planted, if we, possible that you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. If we. I know I'm going to heaven. Not because I'm good, but because I heard that he died for me and God rose him up from the dead, and if I trust him to get me to heaven, he'll take me because I believe that he's my only way in. So I trust that his death was my death. My, my baptism into death. Verse 3, baptized into his death. He died my death. Verse 4, we are buried with him by baptism into death. When Jesus died and you trust Jesus Christ to be your Savior, he sees what Jesus did like you did it. Say, that's incredible. It is, isn't it? Isn't that, isn't that incredible? So when, when he died, he saw you dying. And if you never come to him and believe that when he died, you died, the Bible says he blots your name out of the book of life. So you need to come to him if you haven't. Because there's nothing good about death. Jump to verse 18, would you please? Verse 18 says, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now, see the word now, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Verse 20, for when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Verse 21, what fruit? What benefit? What fruit? Verse 21, had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. Death. As an eternal death. As in lake of fire. As an eternal damnation. As an H-E-L-L. -L. Say, you still believe in that? I don't want to, but the Bible does. So if the Bible believes in it, I have to. You can't write that out. You can rewrite the Bible all you want. That there's a hell. And that's what he's not just talking about being dead, being in the ground. He's talking about going to hell. Verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit. Now you have fruit. You have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Man, he, he just spells this right out. You want to keep sinning? You want to stay in your sin? You want to go without grace? Fine, verse 23, the wages of sin, see it, is death. He's not going to force you to try. He's not going to force. He's not going to grab you and, and headlock you and noogie you. Take my grace. No, you don't have to. But he's saying, just so you know, the wages, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. But, he says, by the way, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to pray, Lord, speak to us now. Help us to be honest. We want to hide. We want to pretend we're okay. We want to put our guard up so nobody can get through and make us look bad. I pray, dear Lord, that you would help us to see the truth about us, the truth from the word. I just want to be 
I want to be your, your mouthpiece. They asked John the Baptist, are you Christ? He said, no, nope, I'm just a voice. Today I just want to be a voice, Lord. Make me a voice for the truth. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 2,000 years ago, you weren't here. Some of you were, but you were young. 2,000 years ago, the Son of God went to the cross and died for our sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Not just physical death, eternal death. Spiritual death. The reason that Jesus came Christmas was so that we could have Easter. He came, was born, so that he could die on the cross and rise from the dead. You say, well, there's not a holiday to celebrate his death. No, the church is supposed to do that. We call it the Lord's Supper. Remember that? This do in remembrance of me. Remember that? For as often as you eat this bread, you do show the Lord's death. We need to baptize soon. Some of you got saved. You need, to get, you need to get wet. That won't get you in heaven. It won't get you saved. It'll just get you wet. But people need to see you wet. That means you're going to do what the Lord wants you to do. You're going to follow him. And that picture when you get baptized is you go down in the water is the death of Christ. And when you come back up out of the water, that's a picture of his resurrection. And so Paul writes to them, and he says, now listen, if, we, if we've done that, if, if our sin has been taken care of, he uses the term, so now we should walk in newness of life. Jesus, when he came, are you close? Could you grab a verse for a minute? 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Just head towards the end of the Bible. Romans is followed by 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is followed by 2 Corinthians. And if you would find 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want to show you what Jesus did with your sin. You can't do anything with them. He can. You can be bothered by them. You can be weighted down by them. You're going to answer for them. So Jesus said, man, I've got to do something with their sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It doesn't say, it does not say that Jesus carried our sin. I hate when people say that. He bore your sins on Calvary. He did not. He became your sin. And, and the Bible says, for he made him to be sin for us. Do you understand? That's the substitutionary death of Christ. When Jesus died, God saw you. When he died on that cross and suffered, God didn't see him. He saw you. He became sin. For he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus became sin. If you're at that verse, notice something. It says, for me, he made him to be. Isn't it funny? We're so smart, we overlook little words like we don't need them. The Bible wasn't written in shorthand. There's a reason for every word. And it says there, for he made him to be. Not to taste it. Not to swallow it. Not to carry it. Everything that I have ever done or ever will do, Jesus became. Wow. Wow. No wonder he can save me. He didn't just die in my place. He became me. So when Romans talks about baptism into death, that's what it's talking about. 
He became my sin. He wasn't a sinner. It says who knew no sin. He had to become what we are. And the great thing is when he became what we are, because he became, are you with me? Because he became what we are, we can become what he is. That's why we're in church. We're not here just showing up bringing money. We're here showing up that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Some of you need to work on that. You're fighting it. Well, I'm here. Well, he's not talking about being here. He's talking about being made the righteousness of God in him. Look at that verse, 2 Corinthians. And for he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let God make his righteousness in you. Don't fight that. Thank God when God looks at you when you're born again, he doesn't just make you look righteous. He makes you righteous. Hello? Hello? He doesn't just say, well, they look good enough. Have you ever done that? Have you ever painted a wall and then the sun shines on it? Huh? You, you women who clean the windows? I'll be talking to my wife, front door's open, sun shining through the glass screen door. All of a sudden, she's looking right through me. And I go, what are you looking at? She goes, that window is dirty. You're not talking to the window. You're talking to me. She couldn't help but notice. Did you ever notice when, the, when the, those gleams of the sun shine through your window, all the dust floating around in your house? Quit dusting. It doesn't help. Why would you waste all that time and effort? You better just close up, close the blinds. Because, man, when the sun shines through, it exposes everything. God punished Jesus Christ like he was a sinner. Why? Because he became sin for us. And Jesus had to be punished for every sin so we would never have to be. That's why we were baptized into his death. He didn't say, call on me. We need to understand what he did for us. What kind of love is that when God punishes his own son for us? You know what I would call it? For God so loved the world. That God would punish his own son for us. us. And the proof that our sins are, are gone was the resurrection. And our sins are gone because God loves us. And when a person comes to God for salvation, they can't claim that they've never sinned. Then why did he die? If you never sinned, he didn't have to die. He had to die because you and I are big sinners. Our kids come out of the womb sinning. We teach them, say thank you. Quit saying mine. Hey, they're sinners. We celebrated the Lord's Supper recently. Why? Because Jesus doesn't ever want us to forget what he did for us. We all have the problem of forgetfulness. Amy's birthday's coming. My daughter said, you know mom's birthday's coming. I said, it is. I write it in my calendar. I forget to look. It's in my phone. I'm not looking for birthdays. I'm looking for appointments. Say, have you shopped for her yet? Mind your own business. Leave me alone. She's got me. What more could you want? I'm kidding. A little. We can't change ourselves. 
That's why when we do the Lord's Supper, it's like, hey, look what I did for you. You didn't do this. I did this. I gave my body for you. I shed my blood. I did that. You didn't do this. Remember what I did for you. That's baptism too. How many of you are baptized? Jim's dad baptized Amy and I, Pastor Reed. I didn't know what was going on. I just got saved. I'm in this water. I'm wearing a dress. They called it a gown. It's a dress. I'm old-fashioned. He said, have you trusted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? I said, yes. He said, then based upon your salvation, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he dunked me down all the way under and brought me up out. I wasn't any more saved. But I'll never forget my baptism. I did it to obey the Lord. I did it because he wants me to remember baptism is a one-time thing. The Lord's Supper is, it isn't a one-time thing. God knows us, and we forget, and the devil attacks us. So God wants to remember who we are, who we are in Christ. We're saved not because of how many verses we read. We're saved not because we had a good day. We're saved not because we're a good person. God accepts us as his children only because Jesus shed his blood on the cross for us, dying like we should have died. We're baptized into his death. His death is the only way for God to forgive us of our sin. Say, well, man, I don't get all that. You don't have to get all that. You just need to get that you deserve hell. Jesus died for you. You ought to run to him. You ought to trust him because you may die that quick and you won't get a chance to trust him. If I die in my sleep, I'm going to heaven. If I die of a heart attack, I'm going to heaven. If I die a slow, agonizing death, I'm going to heaven. I've taken care of that. I'm not waiting for the last moment. I'm not hanging on a cross like the thief on the cross did, realizing he was literally moments from death. And he trusted Christ as his Savior. Not everybody gets that opportunity. The Lord's Supper reminds us it isn't about how long we pray. It isn't whether we're nice to others. The Lord's Supper, Jesus dying on the cross, Jesus paying for our sins, it, it, it reminds us that we're going to heaven because we put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. He died on the cross. He died for me. Don't forget that. It's not about you. It's not about what you do. God wants us to remember that it's the blood of Jesus that washed away our sin. God didn't say, when I see your feelings, I will pass over you. God didn't say, when I see your obedience, I will pass over you. God didn't say, when I see your Bible reading schedule, I'll pass over you. God didn't say, when I see your love for others, I, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Remember why you're saved. Satan wants you to look at what you did in the past or even what you did yesterday so you aren't looking at Jesus. And he wants you to get depressed about who you are. I got news for you. Let me tell you who you are. If you're born again, you're God's child. Nobody can touch you. doesn't matter what he tells you, what he thinks you are. You are a child of God. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. When we remember the Lord's death, when we remember what he did for us, when we remember who we are, when we remember that I trusted him, we're telling the devil that God did for us what needed to be done. Man, if you had to rely on being good, you'd be a fit every day. You imagine that? How many of you had kind of a rough day yesterday? Let's vote. How many of you had kind of a rough day this week? Man, thank God you're not going to heaven 
based upon your week? Huh? Just say something you shouldn't say. Just think a thought, and that I can keep my mouth shut once in a while, no comment. I can keep my mouth shut once in a while. But man, my mind goes crazy. It's going to happen. It hasn't happened, but it's going to happen when we're driving. I do my best to be a testimony to my wife. But one day my wife's going to say, and I'm not going to say a thing. I'm going to think it. My lovely wife's going to say, I heard that. Because it may not be coming out of my mouth, but it is stirring up in my heart. God deliver me from that. Hey, because it'll come out my mouth. It'll come out my mouth. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Hey, remember that Jesus died for you and that you died when he died. And when he came alive, you came alive. And if you run to him and trust him, you are more alive than you'll ever be. You won't be more alive in heaven. You'll just be in a different place. That's why I think we ought to sing like we're in heaven because not much will be different. Some of you will be a different age. You'll be a different height. You have different hair color. You'll be a different ethnicity. We'll all be Italians up there. God has done for me what needed to be done. I can't do it, and the devil can't take it away. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Lord, would you please convince if there's anyone here, if there's anybody watching, I'm concerned about people who are just sitting there. It's easy for them as they watch at home or wherever they're at. It's too easy for them to turn this off and say, I'm moving on. May they, keep, may they keep on this service. May they keep watching the live stream. May they, may they be able to say before you, I know I'm a Christian. I know I'm born again. I know I'm going to heaven when I die. And it's not, it's not anything that I did do. It's not anything I could do. Jesus became sin for me. He didn't just take it and carry it. He became sin for us who knew no sin. Man, that's huge. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. No matter what the devil says to me, I have been made when I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have been made the righteousness of God. Doesn't matter what anybody thinks about me. It doesn't even matter what they hear or see in me. It matters what you see, God. And I'm not perfect, and I don't live the Christian life like I ought to, but I have been made the righteousness of God in him. Lord, if someone's watching, and they've never asked Jesus Christ to be their Savior, would you speak to their heart? I can't. I'm talking. They're, they're hearing me. They need to hear you. They need to hear you say to them, I love you. I died for you. I rose from the dead for you. You need to trust me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Lord, someone might be sitting in here, and they're not sure they're going to heaven. And you could say to them, hey, I love you. Why won't you trust me? Quit thinking you can do it. Quit thinking you could do enough. All you could do is sin. You need my grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Lord, there might be someone in this room or watching by camera. They may, they may know in their heart they've never asked Jesus to be their Savior. If they died right now, they are not 100% sure that they would go to heaven. Would you please, would you please convince them that they're lost? I'm trying, Lord. 
You need to do it. I, it, it. It ain't up to me. I didn't die for them. I didn't rise from the dead for them. You did that. So please speak to them. Show them that you're the only way. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done. You said, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Thank you that I can come to Jesus, and I did as an 18-year-old boy. I came to Jesus and said, Lord, I I'm a sinner. Please save me. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he rose from the dead. I'm asking you to be my Savior, and I'll never forget you became my Savior. And you always have been from that day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Please don't, don't stir at all. Hold still. Please, please don't look up. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I want to ask you a question. If you died right now, if you died, listen carefully. If you died right now, are you 100% sure you'd be in heaven? You say, preacher, I am 100% sure I would go to heaven. Here's my hand. I want you to know that. Raise it high. Preacher, I am 100% sure that I would go to heaven. Put them down. I'm not going to try to see them. You say, preacher, I'm not 100% sure. I am not sure I'm going to heaven, but I would like to be sure. If somebody would take a Bible and show me what it says, I'm willing to do what the Bible says. I'm willing to hear, willing to listen, willing to see it. I want to know. I want to know I'm going to heaven when I die. Would you pray for me? Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Just lift your hand. Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm not sure, but I'd like to be sure when I die I'm going to heaven. Would you pray for me? I want to. I will. I won't call you out. I, nobody will know who you are. Just me. Preacher, will you, that's me. Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Thank you. Anyone else? Will you, will you pray for me? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Pastor, here's my hand. Would you pray for me? I would like to know for sure. I would like to know when I die I'll be in heaven. Would you pray for me? All right. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I pray. If someone's sitting in this room. And they're sure. But they're not acting like it. You said when you made Jesus sin for us. You then made us righteous. We read in Romans that we need to start obeying and walking and living like we're righteous. And it may be that you're speaking to someone here about something in their life that they need to deal with. I don't know what it is. I didn't call out a bunch of stuff. You can do that so much better. You can do it perfectly. But God, for those who would say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure of heaven but if someone would take a Bible and show me, I'll listen. I'll listen. God, help them. Help them to take a step today to trust Christ, to listen to what the Bible says, to see what the Bible says. Your word so simply says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You said, for with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Lord, that you made it possible for any of us, no matter how big a sinner, no matter how little a sinner we are, we can trust Christ. Challenge our hearts today. Speak to us, Lord, as we have this invitation. Make it easy for us to get saved. Make it hard for us not to. Whoever it is, make it easy for us to live a righteous life because we say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I said it before, I'm going to do it again. I, I've got to do it. God's got to help me. I want to show the righteousness of God in my life. I want to live like I, I am who I am. Help us, Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Would you stand? As you're standing, piano's playing. As the piano plays, someone could help you. If, you. if you'd come to me and say, you know, I want to go to heaven, we can have someone take a Bible and show you what it means to know for sure you're going to heaven. 
as the piano plays and you're standing, just leave your seat, come down the aisle, come to me and say, hey, I, I don't know I'm going to heaven, but I would like to know. I would like to know. I need to know. I, I, I can't guess. I can't hope. I've got to know. The Bible says these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. We can know. We can know. You're here today. Do you know you're living the life he wants you to live? Are people seeing Christ by the way you live? She's playing. God speak your heart about that. Why don't you just come and tell God, God, I, I don't look like I should, but I know I need to. Please help me. Help you say, I, Preacher, I've prayed that prayer before. Well, be smart and pray it again. You don't pray it once and be done. It didn't work. It works. You keep asking. You keep asking. God speak to your heart. God wants you to trust him. God wants you to come to him. God wants you to believe that he's your only way into heaven. Let us show you. Let, 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 us, let us take the Bible and you can see what God said. Heavenly Father, there is joy that comes with salvation. You call it unspeakable. You can't describe it. We're going to heaven. We know it. We know we're not there yet. But when we get saved, there's something that happens. It's, it's one of the fruits of being born again. We're thrilled that you would die for us. And we realize we're not worthy of it. We, we realize Jesus became sin for us. We realize that when he died, that we, we went down into that death. We were baptized. We were covered with that death like, like he was. So he, he died our death. And God, you saw us. You didn't just see him. You saw us. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, for my sin. Help us to live for you and talk about it and brag about it and, and shout it. I pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.